Rocket Lab now stands as the second most active aerospace company in the U.S., a distinction that puts pressure on legacy players like Blue Origin and ULA. With that momentum, the company is pushing hard on Neutron, its upcoming reusable rocket designed to close the gap with SpaceX. Recent milestones show Neutron is moving beyond concept and into real execution. How far has Rocket Lab come and what could Neutron mean for the balance of power in the space race? Let's find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. For many years, discussions about launch records, rapid turnaround, and reusability have been dominated by SpaceX. Its achievements have reshaped expectations across the global space industry, and its cadence of launches has become the benchmark by which all others are measured. Yet beyond this dominant narrative, there is another company that continues to draw growing attention from industry observers and space enthusiasts alike. The company is Rocket Lab. What makes Rocket Lab especially compelling is not just its technical accomplishments, but the context in which those accomplishments have been achieved. Unlike Blue Origin or ULA, Rocket Lab does not benefit from vast financial backing, decades of institutional legacy, or deep ties to government launch programs stretching back generations. Instead, it has carved out its position through persistence, focused engineering, and a clear understanding of its niche. Over time, that niche has expanded into something far more ambitious. Rocket Lab first made its name with Electron, a small orbital launch vehicle designed to serve the rapidly growing small satellite market. Electron was not intended to compete directly with medium or heavy lift rockets. Instead, it offered dedicated access to orbit, flexible scheduling, and a launch cadence that appealed to commercial, civil, and defense customers alike. Over the years, Electron has steadily built an impressive track record. As of this year, Rocket Lab has conducted more than 70 orbital launches in total, with 16 orbital flights completed this year alone at the time this video was produced. Those numbers placed Rocket Lab firmly among the most active launch providers in the U.S. This consistency is not accidental. It reflects a company that has learned how to manufacture, integrate, launch, and operate orbital rockets with reliability and efficiency. Even more importantly, it reflects a willingness to iterate and improve. Rocket Lab did not stop with a fully expendable electron. Instead, it began experimenting with recovery and reuse, gradually pushing the boundaries of what a small launch vehicle could achieve. Now, Rocket Lab is preparing for a far more ambitious leap, and that leap is Neutron. Neutron represents a major evolution for the company. Unlike Electron, Neutron is a medium lift rocket designed to carry significantly larger and more valuable payloads. This shift opens the door to new markets, including Constellation deployments, national security missions, and potentially crewed or cargo missions in the future. Most importantly, Neutron is designed from the outset with reusability in mind, a decision that reflects the realities of modern launch economics. According to Rocket Lab, Neutron is expected to enter service around 2026, with its debut drawing closer with each milestone the company announces. While the first launch is still ahead, recent updates suggest that Neutron is rapidly transitioning from concept and development into hardware that is ready for flight testing. One of the most eye-catching elements of Neutron is its fairing, informally known as Hungry Hippo. This is not just a nickname meant to attract attention. It reflects a genuinely unconventional design that sets Neutron apart from nearly every other orbital launch vehicle in operation today. Recently, Rocket Lab released images showing the rollout and transportation of Neutron's fairing. These images depicted the fairing being moved by truck and transported by barge, offering a clear sense of its scale and maturity. Alongside the images, Rocket Lab announced that qualification and acceptance testing for the fixable reusable fairing and upper module had been completed, and that the hardware was on its way to launch Complex 3. This announcement was significant. Qualification and acceptance testing are critical phases in rocket development. They are designed to verify that a component not only meets its design requirements, but can also withstand the stresses and conditions it will encounter during real missions. Completing this process indicates a high level of confidence in the design, structure, and operational concept of the fairing. Rocket Lab had previously hinted at this progress, but the release of imagery and detailed test results made it clear that Hungry Hippo is no longer an experimental concept. It is flight-ready hardware. A video released by the company provided further insight into the testing process. In the footage, the fairing is shown
shown mounted on a platform as it undergoes repeated opening and closing cycles. This test is designed to verify the reliability, speed, and flexibility of the fairing during payload deployment in flight. Unlike traditional fairings that are jettisoned entirely, Neutron's fairing must open, deploy the payload, and then close again, all while remaining attached to the booster. The video also shows the fairing's canards, sometimes referred to as fins, being actively manipulated. These surfaces play a role in guiding the first stage during ascent, descent, and re-entry. Their inclusion in the testing process suggests that Rocket Lab is validating not only structural integrity, but also aerodynamic control and guidance performance. Another striking aspect of the video is the sense of scale. Workers can be seen standing beside individual halves of the fairing, underscoring just how large Neutron is compared to Electron. This visual alone reinforces the idea that Rocket Lab is entering an entirely new class of launch vehicles. Alongside the video, Rocket Lab has stated that it has successfully completed qualification and acceptance testing of the Hungry Hippo fairing. The company emphasized that the design, structure, and operations of Neutron's fixed reusable fairing and upper module had been proven and that the fairing was ready for launch. This confidence is supported by several impressive test results that Rocket Lab has publicly shared. First, the company simulated the opening and closing of the fairing halves under flight-like conditions. The results were remarkable. The entire operation took just one and a half seconds. This is less than half the time typically required for stage separation and vehicle reorientation during a mission. Such speed demonstrates not only mechanical precision, but also the ability to minimize exposure during critical phases of flight. Second, Rocket Lab conducted tests to simulate maximum dynamic pressure, commonly referred to as Max-Q. This is the point in flight when a rocket experiences the greatest aerodynamic stress. During these tests, Neutron exceeded a force of 275,000 pounds, or approximately 113 tons distributed across its carbon composite structure. Successfully surpassing this threshold reinforces confidence in Neutron's structural reliability during ascent. Third, the company tested the canards that will guide the first stage during launch and re-entry. These components were subjected to 125% of their expected mechanical load. Passing this test demonstrates a significant safety margin and confirms the robustness of the guidance system. Together, these results paint a picture of a launch vehicle that is not merely progressing, but doing so with measurable and verifiable success. Beyond the rocket itself, Rocket Lab is advancing the infrastructure needed to support Neutron. LC3 has seen major progress highlighted by recent testing of its water deluge system. This system suppresses acoustic energy, manages heat, and protects both the vehicle and the pad during liftoff. Unlike Starship's large-scale approach, Neutron's deluge pipes are integrated directly into the launch mount, spraying water downward alongside the exhaust plume. Recent tests showed strong, stable performance, indicating readiness for static fires, and future launches. Attention is also shifting to Neutron's second stage. It's slated for static fire testing soon, another key milestone. The stage uses a single Archimedes engine, which has already completed standalone tests. At sea level, Archimedes produced about 164,000 pounds of thrust with a specific impulse of 329 seconds. The vacuum variant reached 200,000 pounds of thrust and a specific impulse of 367 seconds. These numbers place Neutron squarely in the modern median lift class and underscore Rocket Lab's growing competence competence in engine development, one of the hardest problems in rocketry. Combined with steady progress on hardware, testing, and ground systems, Neutron is clearly moving from concept to reality. As its first flight approaches, the central question remains, can Rocket Lab deliver success on its debut mission? That debut, expected early next year, will mark the beginning of a new approach to reusability. The Hungry Hippo fairing is central to this approach. True to its name, the fairing opens wide with its two halves hinging to one side to deploy the payload. Crucial the fairing remains attached to the booster throughout the mission. After payload deployment, it closes again, becoming an integral part of the returning first stage. This design stands in sharp contrast to conventional rockets. Traditionally, fairings are separate structures mounted atop the rocket to protect the payload during ascent. Once the payload is ready for deployment, the fairing halves are jettisoned and discarded. To date, only SpaceX has made meaningful progress in recovering fairings, and even then, the process requires ships, nets, and additional recovery op 
operations. Neutron eliminates this step entirely by keeping the fairing attached to the booster. Rocket Lab avoids the cost and complexity associated with fairing recovery. This approach also reduces turnaround time, since there is no need to retrieve, refurbish, and reintegrate separate fairing components. In this respect, Neutron offers a potential advantage even over Falcon 9. While SpaceX has successfully recovered and reused fairings, doing so still involves significant operational effort. Rocket Lab's design simplifies the process, which could translate into faster reuse and lower overall costs. Another consequence of this design is that, that the neutron vehicle as seen on the pad is effectively the first stage. The second stage is housed inside the fairing, treated almost like a payload itself. This unconventional arrangement offers several benefits. First, it allows for more thorough recovery of the first stage, even if neutron remains partially reusable rather than fully reusable. Second, it provides additional protection for the second stage, shielding it from external aerodynamic and thermal loads during ascent. Neutron's design choices are tightly linked to cost. Rocket Lab expects each launch to cost around $55 million, a figure that undercuts many competitors and directly challenges Falcon 9 on missions that do not require its maximum payload capacity. At the heart of Neutron is the Archimedes engine, a Methalox stage combustion design that places it in the same technical class as SpaceX's Raptor and Blue Origin's BE-4. Methane offers clear advantages, lower cost, cleaner combustion, reduced engine wear, and strong potential for reuse and long-duration missions. Archimedes produces less raw thrust than Raptor or BE-4, making it more comparable to SpaceX's Merlin engine. While Merlin delivers higher thrust and benefits from a decade of proven flight heritage, Archimedes offers higher efficiency through its staged combustion cycle. Like any new engine, it will ultimately have to earn its credibility through repeated successful flights. Even so, Neutron represents a meaningful step forward in reusability and operations. These advances position Rocket Lab as a serious contender in the medium lift market and place pressure on incumbents that have struggled to move beyond expendable designs. ULA remains tied to largely expendable rockets, while Blue Origin's progress with reusability has been slower than expected. Rocket Lab, by contrast, has already defied expectations with Electron, becoming the second most active U.S. launch provider after SpaceX. But in the end, surpassing SpaceX is not the immediate goal. Falcon 9's launch cadence, recovery record, and operational maturity remain unmatched, and Starship represents a leap in scale few can rival. Neutron's role is different, to provide a credible, competitive alternative that expands choice and drives innovation. With Neutron nearing its debut, Rocket Lab is poised to intensify competition in the launch market. The challenges ahead are real, but so is the momentum. The next few years will determine just how far Neutron can carry Rocket Lab in the evolving space race. And with that, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.